What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we're back with stage six of the Giro d'Italia and today we have the day with the most climbing in the race thus far. We have the Forca di Gualdo and then we head to the San Giacomo climb from Ascoli Piceno. It should be a great day and a big day in the GC. Away we go then and I'm afraid to say guys it's not the best start because Carthy gets a minus two day. Of course our leader today that is not ideal. Let's try and go in the breakaway though. Maybe Guerrero or we can have Saicedo maybe up the road. Let's see. So right now I'm trying to get my guys to the front while setting a little rhythm with Vandenberg because lots of riders already attacking for the breakaway. And Guerrero and Saicedo started so far back in the peloton. Going to be very difficult for them. Okay, so now we have them to the front and plenty of riders attacking, including a tier Volta. We have Vandenberg here. Guerrero has followed as well. He can sit in the wheel of his teammate Saicedo coming to. Let's try and pack this breakaway. It could be a day for the breakaway stage win. And there we go. The peloton let the wheels go and we do have a 20 rider breakaway. Bouchard, Kumbum and Gujard. We have three riders here, including Guerrero and Saicedo. A tier Volta is here, a very dangerous rider. As we know, Nico Roach, Cataldo, and further up the road, we have Bidard Visconti as well. So a very nice breakaway up the road here. But guys, we have to talk about it. In the real life Giro, Mikel Lanza crashing out on stage five, DNFing the race. I am absolutely gutted. I'm a massive fan of Mikel Lanza, as you guys probably know following uh, the Freelander series. But how gut-wrenching was it to see him on the floor, not able to get up, taken to hospital after looking so great as well. I hoped it would be his year, but sadly not to be yet again for Lanza at the Giro. Heartbreaking stuff. So the breakaway will sweep up these intermediate sprint points. I'm not too bothered about this at all. I'm more bothered that the breakaway only have a minute and a half right now on the chasing peloton. Why are they chasing so hard? They're using the Zolo on the front to chase in the breakaway on this stage. Not quite sure what that's about. Oh my, big moment in the race because Emmanuel Bookman has fallen in the descent. Okay, he's back on his bike. I was worried there for Bora Hansgrohe. Dries de Bont goes down as well in this pretty treacherous descent, it seems. Bora, of course, is sitting up, including Peter Sagan for their GC leader. We have splits as well, and this is only going to increase the rhythm in the peloton. We have two and a half minutes up there in the breakaway. Vandenberg needs to come to the front and try and hold this lead. And it has been Quebec Assos on the front pretty much all day here. Not sure why they're working so hard unless Domenico Pozzovivo is feeling absolutely out of this world. So Bookman is trying to get back in here, but still, I think Bodnar is done. They are going to get back in just about on the foot of this climb, but Bookman, surely that is going to cost him a little later on, if nothing else. You can see, still Quebec on the front. We're working very hard up the roads with Julius Vandenberg for Guerrero and Caicedo. So Vandenberg has done an absolutely stellar job up the roads in the breakaway. He is now done, though. He can sit up and wait for the guys behind Guerrero. Caicedo holding on to this group, still 4K to go on the Paso de Gualdo. And we've now seen a real increase in the rhythm behind, but again, it slows with uh, Quebec Assel struggling. Now Mario Schmidt, Team Mobile Legend, has come to the front. We've seen lots of riders now starting to struggle to the top of this climb. Guerrero trying to lead Caicedo. These guys going for the KOM. I'm not too worried about that. I just want to try and keep up them over the top here and try and maybe go for the stage win. So a Tia Volta crosses the line first, then Dina, Bauman, Cataldo. Then we take the few kind of final places there, but still we're at the front. Guerrero can work with Saicedo with these guys at the front of the race and how big is our lead on the peloton right now it's not massive three and a half four minutes really but hopefully a lot of teams have used most of their domestiques um, until we reach that final climb so this is very much all over the road right now let's focus on the top of this next peak though you can see these guys are attacking a tier volta again Maybe going for the KOM Maglia at Zura here um, at this Giro Italia. I think Guerrero is going to struggle. Let's set a rhythm, actually. Saicedo um, with Guerrero on his wheel. Let's go down to 65. I don't mind if these guys go up the roads. We need to stick together as a team. Volta is going to take the points again. And the tier Volta looks unreal today, flying over that, uh, over that climb right there. We'll mop up. Third place with Caicedo, I think fourth with Guerrero as well. Now we can settle in, catch up with those guys, and you can see behind there are riders absolutely all over the road here. Visconti, he's been dropped. And Giulio Ciccone now attacks from the peloton. We know he's looked great in real life, and you can see we still have almost 100 riders 
in this group. But an interesting move right there by Giulio Giacone at this stage of the race. So the Peloton descend the Giro d'Italia. And just so you can get an idea of the current situation um, on this descent, Giacone making grounds up. But is he spending too much energy here? I'm not sure if he's got any helpers up the road. Doesn't seem so. Uh, we can have a few AG2R riders here. Nico Roche, a day. And then all the way up the roads, we have the front group of the race now, just behind a Tia Volta. We will catch him though, ahead of that final climb. Okay, so we have had a split in the Peloton in this descent. I've noticed we have Danny Martinez here. Interesting. Not sure any other big favourites though at all really are behind. No, not really. Cepeda is here. But again, not really a favourite. I think those guys are gone because at the front of this race, we have Quebec at Assos absolutely full steam ahead still they're working so hard for the potential stage win i guess for uh pozzo vivo we have Giacone just 40 seconds up the road now then we have this five man group a minute and a half though back on the group at the head of the race we'll work a bit harder with guerrero and sit in with saiseda who is our man for the stage so again the maglia chiclamino points will be swept up by the breakaway i'm not too bothered about them at all and now we come to the San Giacomo climb. Let's go to Ruben Guerrero's wheel. Caicedo is our man, like I said, for this stage. We'll set a steady rhythm. Kuhn Bauman, these guys are going to try and attack. We're going to go a bit more steady than them, I think, and try and take Caicedo to the stage. But we need to be very aware now of the group behind. And it is Bahrain victorious coming to the front, I guess, for their leader, Mikhail Lander. What a... Oh, it's such a shame. If Lander wins this Giro playthrough, I won't even be upset, but I will be because... It could have been his year in real life as well. Okay, so we're trying to keep a somewhat steady rhythm with Carthy, but we're too far back in this group. Let's up this a little. Not the day for Carthy to have a minus two. That is for sure. We've had some unlucky race days with him so far at this Giro and just 90 seconds now for the guys at the very head of the race. But Bahrain Victorious are losing some strength here. Mahoric is done. Maida is struggling a little, but they still have Caruso and Bilbao, remember. 55 riders are here and only six K to go, but only 45 seconds now for these guys. Let's try and up it with Guerrero, but I think this is a lost cause for sure. And now we have the first attack. Stan Martin attacks, and you can see I'm so far out of position, trying to move up all the way, but we have struggled to do that so, so much here. We have Simon Carr. We have TJ as well. Hugh Carthy needs to keep a steady rhythm throughout today. We may as well sit up, I think, in the group behind with Guerrero. Caicedo can kick on, maybe, but plenty of attacks are taking place, and Carthy is so far out of position. But to be fair, we're staying in this group. Still just 3k to go. I'm trying to make my way through these guys. And now we have Caicedo who can protect Hugh Carthy. Sadly, we have missed some moves further up the roads. Plenty of moves as well. Mikhail Lanza, Dan Martin, Vlasov, Yates, Bernal, Balkan Molmer as well. And then we have the group behind. We need to stay steady with Carthy today. Maybe now though, we can go up to 88. 2k to go in this climb. Lanza going for the stage win. Bilbao is done. Now we kick with Hugh Carthy trying to bridge this gap with the big Brits. And we do do that successfully, to be fair. And are these guys now struggling a little bit? Here comes Bilbao. Can we bridge away? Let's try and push a little with Carthy. Lanza, is he in trouble? 800 meters to go. I'm not sure what to do here, but we do have a gap on the likes of Ciccone. And I think Remco, Evanapol as well. Here we go. Going for the stage. Mikel Lanza. Mikel Lanza wins the stage on the San Giacomo. Oh my word. What a moment. What a time for him to win it as well, considering what's happened in real life. Carthy, though, great day considering a minus two day. Giacone finishes well. Bookman loses time. And further back, we have the likes of Nibali, Remco Evenepoel, very poor day for quick step as well. And the Maglia Rosa as well, Davide Formolo, he is no longer in pink. Bar day, not a good day either. Let's see who has claimed the pink jersey. I'm a little speechless, guys. Mikel Lanza wins the stage after he's forced to withdraw from the Giro in real life with broken collarbones, broken ribs, but... It's a shame, but at the same time, it's great to see Mikhail Lanza win this stage here in our playthrough. Great stage for us, though, Hugh Carthy. Just five riders at the very front, and Hugh Carthy was one of them on a minus two day. That bodes well for the rest of this race, for sure. Bilbao rode well. Chicone is here. Balcom Olmer 
riding particularly well. I will say Remco lost quite a lot of time and you can see quite a few riders losing some big time. So now we have Egan Bernal into pink already, but we are just 21 seconds behind with Carthy and this is very, very close at the top. This is hotting up to be a very exciting Giro. Also, Atia Bolsa did claim the Maglia at Zura, deservedly so, after that ride today. So tomorrow's stage is another chance for the sprinters again. We'll try and go for some Chiclamino points with Bessio. That'll be our main goal. And we'll see who probably takes the stage because I doubt it'll be an EF rider. But I hope you guys enjoyed today. As always, if you did, smash that like button. Drop a sub as well if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.